According to a government whistleblower, the Biden administration's lax border rules have allowed human traffickers to bring children into the United States for the purpose of prostitution. Tara Lee Rodas, a former Department of Health and Human Services manager, told Project Veritas that the result looks a lot like human trafficking. So your trafficker in Guatemala, he's got to use the cartel to get his children across Mexico. But once he gets the children to the U.S. border, we take them. Mm -hmm. So we take the product. These, these vulnerable children, we care for them, we clothe them, we feed them. And then with your dollars and my dollars and the dollars of every person watching, we fly that product directly to the trafficker. The trafficker then has the ability to labor traffic that child until they're caught, if they ever are. And, and God forbid it's sex trafficking. Is this true? And if so, what can be done about it? With me now to talk about it is Congressman Michael Cloud. He serves on the House Committee on Oversight and Reform. He represents the 27th Congressional District of Texas. Congressman Cloud, welcome to the program. It's good to be with you tonight. And what, what an important topic to be covering. Yeah, first, I just making sure I do want to get your reaction to this report from the whistleblower. It seems almost unbelievable, you know, because we have you now there's lots of partisan differences, but I don't think anybody in America is trying to aid and abet human trafficking. What's your reaction to this accusation? Well, we've been talking about this for several years. This is exactly what we've known has been happening. You know, I, I've visited facilities where half the young women will admit to being assaulted on the journey. We've been talking about the fact that this is really a taxpayer funded human trafficking. The cartels take them to the border. Uh, this administration's turned our border security apparatus into just a processing facility and a transportation mechanism to where many times the cartels take up that relationship at the end and people put into either a, a work slavery relationship or a, a lot of times a, a, for these young women, sadly, a, a sex slavery relationship. And, it, you know, it, it's heartbreaking that that this is happening. And especially, you know, in, in times past, we've heard this uh, put into terms of compassion where, you know, lawlessness is not compassion. And in us doing the due diligence to make sure our borders are secure and that the people in, uh, that are coming into our, our country are not being trafficked, that they're uh, you know, you know, going through the right and proper legal process, that is actually compassionate. Uh, and, and what's happening right now is just horrific. Uh, it needs to be stopped. It, it's long overdue that we let this go on for this long. Are you saying that when an adult brings children to the border, the Border Patrol simply simply takes the children, processes them, and then returns them to whatever adult brought them to the border? Is that our operating procedure at the moment? Uh, many times, many times that's the case, you know, uh, and, and a lot of times we'll have unaccompanied uh, minors at, at the border as well, you know, and they'll have a name attached to them uh, that someone's put on who their sponsor in the, the U.S. is going to be. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's just there's not really a, a check on whether that person's actually a family member. You know, it's just uh, it's it's not a very good system for protecting the lives of the migrants. It's not a very good system for right now for protecting our communities here in the United States as well. It, it's it, we've got to get back to law and order on our border. It's good for our communities here. It's also good for the migrants that are being taken advantage in this situation. Is this outcome that we're hearing about right now, is this a function of new policy at the border that the Biden administration has put into place? Or is this a function of the number of people who are now crossing the border and border officials are just having to react and this is the way that they are reacting? Well, those two are are connected. Uh, the reason we have such a surge at the border is because of the policies in large part by this administration. And the weakening, of, you know, when when the cartels knew that Biden was coming to office, they started gearing up their, you know, for them, it's like, oh, great, let's start getting our system up and running. Let's start getting the notice outs and start bringing people to to the border. Um, and, you know, when they hear things like maybe, OK, Title 42 is going away for them. They're looking at their business model and saying, OK, we can we can take advantage of, of people. And we've you know, we know about the illicit drugs coming across the tens of thousands of fentanyl deaths that have happened in the United States uh, throughout 
you know, community after community in our in our country. But in the cartels' minds, yes, uh, they they traffic in drugs as well. But 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 that can, they can only sell once. Uh, human lives, they they look at it as, hey, we can. This is residual income for them. We can we can traffic, you know, take advantage of of a person over and over and over again. And this this is the sick, demented mind of the cartels, and, and why we have to be very serious about what's going on at the border. I want to play one other statement here from Tara Lee Rodas, who's the whistleblower from HHS in this case, and get your response. Let's play clip seven. I think most people don't know. They have no idea that children are going to unrelated people, that children are definitely, we have proof, evidence, that they're being recruited and transported. They're then in debt bonded. She uses the phrase debt bondage there. Congressman, what is she referring to? Well, everyone who comes across the border, everything that comes across the border, the cartels control the southern side of our border. Uh, that's for what we would even think legitimate trade. You know, you can talk about avocados and calves and all that other stuff, too. They're also paying uh, the cartels uh, a, a propino or a fee, in a sense, to come across the border. Well, it, humans who come across the border are also coming to the cartels and paying thousands of dollars to the cartels. Sometimes they don't have the money to do so. And so tragically, uh, they end up indebting themselves to the cartels uh, to, to pay this back many times out of their lives and, and bodies. Uh, and again, you know, this is why we need to be very serious about the infrastructure at the border, about getting our border patrol agents back to securing our border and not sitting at a computer typing in and processing and, and you know, it, it's get them back to doing their job of securing our border, securing the communities, pushing back on the lawless uh, aspect of what's going on uh, and, and stop empowering, aiding and abetting these cartels. And that certainly has to be the goal. And I have got to think there's going to be bipartisan support uh, for that effort. And I know that you and the rest of your Republican colleagues are going to have more to say about that in the Congress to come as you take the majority. And we certainly hope and pray that uh, much success will be found in that effort. Congressman, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you.